All right, fishy folks, how we doing? Just spent the last three hours at a, I guess you call it a fish store. It's got about 5,500 gallons in a, a garage, and it's a, a place called Discus R Us. And the owner, uh, James Perinod, is also the president of my local fish club. We basically just uh, shot the stuffing about fish and the hobby and some other stuff for the last couple hours. Of course, I did buy some fish. I know what you're thinking. Mike's getting into discus? No, I'm not that crazy. But he did have some spectacular, I don't know if you can see them, blue and black sword tails. <clears throat> I got two females and a male. That's just one of the females. I also got some Sarah O-nips, O-nip tabs. And, uh, the reason I went was just to, you know, go talk and see his place because I've seen pictures. I talked to him at the fish club meetings. He's got a Facebook group, Discus R Us. He's got a website. All the links will be in the description. But he's like just an honest, down-to-earth guy that sells high-quality stuff. So his place is about an hour and a half from my house. Um, actually, a little less. Maybe about an hour and ten, hour and twenty minutes. So I'm going to head home and uh, get... <clears throat> my new fish acclimated and uh you'll see them later see you soon all right fishy folks made it home got the fish floating here is the dilemma i really didn't want to put any water in that tank until i got everything all drilled i mean everything all plumbed but it's pretty much the only tank i have unless i put those two swords in a five gallon for now there's an option. Three swords in a five gallon for a week is kind of pushing it, especially because I'm not going to get any work done in the fish room this weekend. I have a college visit, all day college visit tomorrow at my son's school. He chose Stevens Institute of Technology. It was his first and only choice. He got in early admission and they have some something going on there so and Sunday is that fish auction so I won't be around at all so let's think this through where else can we put them we could conceivably move this ram for one that's what we're gonna do we're gonna move the ram for one for a couple days it's about five and a half gallon and put the swords in here are we gonna do that I don't know I don't know. I think we're going to do that. Let's see what else I got at the Discus R Us shop. Uh, he is the proud carrier of Sarah Food. I actually met the local Sarah salesman. Hans was his name. Shocker. Hans was a super nice guy. Didn't give anything away, though. I was a little surprised. I asked for a sample. He said he didn't have any. I actually asked for a sample of bags. The Sarah bags. You've seen them. Corey's. Most of Corey's shipments come in them. They're phenomenal. They're thick, rounded corners. I just asked for a couple samples. He said he didn't have any. Okay. But he didn't offer anything else. Anyway, I picked up some O-Nip tabs. These are, um, this is specifically, I mean, it has rams and, go and goldfish. Guppies on it. So I picked that up. They're a little bit more expensive than the regular O-Nips. These have, uh, look, you can see them. Tasty attaching tablets with bloodworms, curl, and tube flicks. Tube. Tube effects. Not tube flicks, dummy. All right. So we got those. We have some eggs. We're trying them out in this. Really not doing any better. Let's talk about the swords. Where are we going to put them? Could put them down there. That's a 20 high. That's a 20 high. I'm not going to move the ram for a couple days. That's silly. It's already me stressed out enough shipping, so I'm going to put 10 gallons of water in there, put them in there, quarantine them, be done with it. All right, I'll be back. All right, fishy folks, we're going to plop and drop. That's the method of acclimation I'm choosing. Stay tuned. For those of you not familiar with plop and drop, it's pretty much exactly what it sounds. I'm gonna plop the fish out of the bag, drop it right into the tank. Watch. Put a hole in the bag. 
carefully pour the fish out. The water goes into a bucket. The fish goes into the tank. Boom! All done! Now we've got the second bag. This one he double bagged, so no problem. We'll try to just cut the first bag. James uses these really cool metal staples. I don't know if you can see that, but there's no rubber bands. It's a little machine that staples them closed. No twisting or messing with rubber bands. One bag. Sound effects, no charge. Second bag. There they are. Alright. They're in the tank. We'll be right back. All right, as usual, I have a mess. I have airlines going crisscross, applesauce, every different way. Uh, I only had a tiny, tiny sponge filter available, so I took that one. And I have, you can see the other big sponge in the back. I have to make some bases. Apparently, mine are all broken. I thought I had one more left, but it's possible I can't find it in the mess. You know, my, my fish room is quite messy. But actually, I thought I had a new one in a box. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna have to make some filters. I'm gonna actually try to do that tonight, make the bases, because I need to dry for like 24, 36 hours or so, the silicone, and that was a crappy camera job shot. So there they are. They're black and blue prized swordtails. So the goal is to breed these and sell them back to James. That's the goal. That's what we want to do. And of course, sell them to other people if they want them, but James is a high quality uh, seller of fish. He pays what a fish is worth and sells it for what it's worth. So I think it'd be beneficial for everyone. So we can get a look at the hyphen sunset plaid. He's back there playing around. I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to add any plants to that. Maybe I'll add some plants to this tank just in case the females are super pregnant. So we gotta, we gotta add the meds in and we're gonna throw some plants in and call it a day for now, guys. All right, fishy folks, believe it or not, I found this aquarium light from 1964 with some sort of grow bulb on it. No, I don't really know when it's from. Uh, probably got it in a deal years ago. Has a T8 grow bulb. Uh, it's probably a 36 inch light with a 24 inch or 36 inch fixture with a 24 inch light um, So I'm just gonna use it temporarily. <coughs> I may take it apart and extend the uh, The contacts out so I could put a 36 inch LED bulb in I'm not really sure but I Just wanted to get some light on these tanks, especially because there's I'm gonna be uh, putting plants in the tanks. So I've been looking for a 36 inch LED shop light local uh you can buy them on amazon but i was looking local figured i would try it first so can't find one uh i can find a 24 and a one a 24 inch and a 12 inch but they're like 100 bucks together i don't want to spend 100 bucks i want to spend like you know like those shop lights up there are 35 dollars each at home depot they're linkable they're leds they use virtually no energy blah 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 yeah so I'm noticing one thing about this tank. It's pretty freaking dirty inside. So I'm going to have to probably clean that. I should have done that first, but I'm lazy, so I didn't. The other thing I made a mistake is I put these fish in a brown tank. This is how the tank came. I'm not going to scrape the paint and paint it in another color. Every time I get a new, I start a new row of tanks, I'm like, I should paint those, and that I never do. Um, I was yesterday where I was at Discus RS. All those tanks were painted white. And all the fish look stunning. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I don't I don't think I'm going to be pulling tanks down to paint them, but you never know. I I wouldn't bet money on it though. Anyway, so we plumbed the this tank. These are the high fin sunset platies I got from 
my local fish club auction almost two weeks ago. Um, it's time I put some plants in there and let those two get busy. Was told they're a male and a female. I didn't really check because that's what I believe, so I'm gonna have to double check. I think they are. Um, and we'll go from there. We have two females and one male. These blue, black, blue, blue, black swordtails. I mean, even in a brown tank, they look stunning. Have you ever seen anything like that? They look gorgeous. So when we picked the the females and males, I picked the smallest male with the longest sword. Um, I thought the longest sword is what I would want, and the smallest one in the, probably indicates the youngest. Uh, and you know, with live bearers, they have a, a fairly short lifespan as far as fish goes. And the females, we picked uh, one of the biggest ones, I think the biggest female, because uh, we know she's going to drop fry. And the other one was the one with the most blue. Um, one thing that James and I discussed when we were picking the fish was all these fish came from the same batch, more than likely. Definitely the same parents. So even if one has more blue than the other, or one is bigger than the other, more than likely their genetics are, are the same. I hope that makes sense. So we didn't we didn't pick uh, we didn't spend too much time picking them, but we did pick some ones that we like, and that was that. He had about, I don't know, 15, maybe 20 left. As far as bites go, they were a little expensive, but that's what you get for quality. I mean, you pay for quality, so. While we're here, we could take a look at the half blacks. Uh, guppies I got at auction about three weeks ago. I still haven't put them in their home tank. Don't know where that's going to be yet. After auction tomorrow, I'll, uh, I'm trying to get this out of your way, but, you know, it's all messy. There we go. So you can see that female is ginormous and all squared off. She's getting ready. Uh, the other female is also quite big. Behind the bubbles on the left, if you can see her. Um, no fry that I see yet. So we'll go from there. They're doing well, though. Um, lots of Java moss them to do their business also a small filter so it looks like I need I have three or four of those big sponges in the back in tanks with no bases or anything so looks like I'm gonna go buy some bases or make make some bases uh, I'm sorry I'm distracted because I'm looking in a koi angel tank and I thought I saw wigglers which is impossible because they were well not impossible but I didn't see any eggs in the tank they all fungus stuff. That last, the, both batches of eggs fungus stuff I had. There are wigglers in this tank. Uh, there's about four of them, and they're being super protective, so I couldn't pull them out. Um, I tried actually, and they got really angry, and a lot more. Three of the four wigglers fell off, so we'll see what happens there. Let's take a look at this giant snail for a second. There you go, giant snail. Look at all the bluegrass frying here. In about two months, you guys are going to have uh, the opportunity to purchase them. Look at that male. Is that not stunning? That is stunning. Stunning, I tell you. Hopefully we get some more males. Yeah, this tank, uh, yeah, there's one male right there that I see. He's going to go to auction with a female. Uh, a pair of these guys are going to auction. Also lots of uh, frying here. Not as much fry though. I've been pulling out of this tank. I've been selling out of this tank. I already sold a couple pairs. People ask all the time, do I have them? And I answer yes. They're $20 a pair plus shipping. People don't want them after that. That's what they cost. Water looks awfully still back there, doesn't it? still so let's see why why okay so let's diagnose this together shall we folks I'm sure this is super interesting for you so this one oh that's why hold on that's 
better people. Uh, it was, it came undone, unplugged? I don't know, I guess that's what you would call it. Shoot, there was something else I wanted to show you. Oh, these valves, see them? People say they suck, I don't know, they're cheap. Uh, I like the ones with levers, they're a little bit more expensive. They're easier to control, but for my purpose, they're fine. And the reason why I have these is I ran out of the, let's see if we can look up there. Whoosh. I ran out of those fancy valves, bought them from Gemco. The last time I went to order, he was actually out of them. And I, I, I had some of these, got it in a, probably a deal. I didn't actually buy them. And uh, so I just used them. I have one there. I have one you can see sticking in the water right there and then there's one behind me for the fry tanks and they work you know what are you gonna do they're fine all right guys i think that's it for fry fry friday why don't you uh smash that like button if you've waited this long in the video you know maybe you want to subscribe hit that uh bell when you subscribe so you know when i produce new content which currently is every wednesday friday and sunday which that's a lot of videos I uh, have a new Instagram, Michael's Fish Room on Instagram, link in the description below. Take a look, we'll be posting some, uh, some pictures and videos there. Um, just quick things, obviously. And uh, of course, if you want to buy any fish and you're local, we can work something out. Michael's Fish Room at gmail.com. And if you're not local, uh, probably in about a week or two, we will start shipping, assuming the weather stays warm. Uh, as I've said before, I will be test shipping something. Hopefully that goes well. Alright guys, hope everyone has a great day. Have a great weekend. Has a great Sunday fun day. Everyone stay great. Great, 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 great. Alright. <laughs> So, I'm gonna, uh, his place is, I just, I can't talk. I don't know why. Um, so, that's that. You'll, uh, you'll see these fish. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs>